On that point, between men and women, are there metabolic differences that need to be mentioned here? Because, you know, when I sometimes when I do ketogenic fasting, my girlfriend, she takes much longer than me to get into a ketogenic state. And I'm wondering if her body is in some way trying to defend mm. the switch. Have you ever seen the, the reality show Alone? Oh, no, I'm not well, a they, show guy. Oh, I'm not either, but they drop these people off in the middle of nowhere and they starve them to death. And you watch the fat come off of them and the men, the fat just melts off of them. And the women, they do what your girlfriend does. It just holds on to them. That we are designed to have that fat on them. So asking them to do a ketogenic state, you'll hear people say, oh, it's going to ruin your hormones. Oh, it's going to, you can't do that. And um, I would say you can have all those conversations once their insulin is normal. But I have lots of women in childbearing years that are excessive producers of insulin and their vitamin D is low, their estrogen is low, they have hair loss on the top of their head, they have skin tags throughout their body, or maybe the first sign was they had PCOS. Okay, all of these are a sign that insulin came in and it's too high in their body. So lowering it has rules. And if you want to have a baby, carry a baby, uh, have uh, the weight come off after you've gestated a baby, um, have weight not be your enemy during menopause, you have to be making ketones at a routine and regular interval. And start with the food. Start with the menus in the kitchen. Don't run to the gym first. I've noticed uh, in women in my life that they've told me that their menstrual cycles become more synced up when they are in a lower carbohydrate diet. Right. Their hormones can hear each other. I mean, when insulin is high, insulin dictates what that sugar does, but it also is the dictator for every morsel of fat. And estrogen, testosterone, vitamin D, they're all a derivative of fat, of cholesterol. And they are, they're put into the fat cells. If you biopsy an obese woman and say, can I see, is there any vitamin D hidden in there? Is there any estrogen? Is there any, yes, they're all in those fat cells you start to lower their insulin and the fat mobilizes. So the hormones that are naturally communicated between women, they can actually hear them again. I mean, that, that tribal thing. If a woman were to stay in a ketogenic state permanently, would there be any disruption to her metabolic health? You mean like me? Yeah. Like, what her, you know, her menstrual cycles, her, uh, yeah, anything. No, I think it's, you're gonna find people that it shouldn't be extreme, meaning, I've been on this for 15 years. The ketogenic phase is at least 20 out of 30 days uh, in a month, the first few years I was on it. Now at 55, uh, menopause in the last year, um, I'm like, without a ketone, my brain doesn't work right now without a ketone. Uh, my energy goes to pot. And I've been walking women through menopause for 25 years. It is not a fun story when they're insulin resistant. So prepare, uh, have the flexibility of that mitochondria to use both ketones and glucose. And that's what a ketogenic state is. Well, we have 12 cans of sardines here. And uh, I, I, I wondered why you, you brought sardines. With well, you. yes, that's a hell of a tool. Why? So um, when you're trying to help patients change behavior. <laughs> Sorry, the sardine juice has gone on my iPad. Oh, good luck getting that off. <laughs> yeah, sardines rank for uh, the worst smelling, but they're not the worst tasting. Now, when it comes to bitter in fish, they don't have the bitterness that tuna does. So, Tell me about sardines. Why, why should I be eating sardines? When you're trying to teach patients, those stats that you read off a minute ago, they don't care. They need a very clear step on how do I begin. Mm -hmm. And when you're working with somebody who cannot seem to get their ketones to rise, and I give them a whole list of menus, that's too noisy. Let's take it down to one food that is high in fat, high in some of the best fats, high in protein. It's whole foods, and it's affordable for everybody under the sun. Okay, so you do you do like a sardine fast? Yeah. So in fact, that that twenty one day, I mean, twenty one day is that three week course where I say I will teach you how to do an advanced ketogenic diet where everybody will be peeing ket or making abundant ketones on day six. Uh, I say, all right, the only thing on the menu for the next three days is sardines. There's no eating window. You can eat as much as you want. There's no limit to the amount. And what I'm pushing them to do is not only eat a nutrient-dense food, but I want them to feel satiety. I want them to feel full. Do I need to be consuming a lot of fat as well? There's plenty of fat in there. But I mean, generally, because this is one of the, th the fat. 
Yeah. Things always puzzles me is I'll, I'll go, say I went a week without eating carbohydrates. Sometimes I'm still not in ketosis. And I think really? I heard somewhere that it's because my fat right. isn't so, high enough. So Yeah. So again, you, at the time you went, you went seven days without eating hardly any carbs, right? Mm -hmm. And you still didn't make a lot of ketones. Mm -hmm. Okay. So you had fat on your body? Yeah. Okay. So why didn't the fat get to your mitochondria? Excess insulin. Okay. You had been in a high insulin state. So if you swallow the fat, then you can turn it into ketones. Right now, all your fat's locked under this insulin bed. If you kept going, it would eventually hit. But that's painful. I mean, I have patients who do it for two weeks. So what are you saying? You're saying that I need to like, eat do this. fat. <laughs> yeah. So if you put the sardines in oil, uh, that's a great high fat, high protein. Uh, it's also a little easier to masticate the, the meat. And you'll have high fat, high protein, and you'll have beautiful ketones by by 48 hours, maybe 72. And what what is the, the composition of my diet in terms of protein, fats, and carbohydrates when I'm trying to get into a ketogenic state? Yeah, I don't let people get distracted by this, right? I say, look at your finger. If it's got a high ketone, you have got enough fat and enough protein uh, and low enough carbs. What most people have is the story you told. I've been doing this for five days. Why don't I make any ketones? And the answer is, what is hidden behind the chemistry is too much insulin. You've got to have, and so that's a great place to say, put the fat up, keep the carbs low, and the ketones will come. When you say put the fat up, you mean eat more yeah. fatty foods. Give me an example of the type of shopping list that yeah. if I was trying to get in a ketogenic state and stay there, I would have. Yeah, my, one of my favorite things is uh, uh, pork belly, more eggs, beef brisket, uh, ribs. Avocado. Uh, Avocado are, have a beautiful marketing team, but they do have carbs in them. And I've had people overeat them. Like I have four avocados today. I'm like, that's, you, you're on the wrong bandwagon there. Avocado makes the list. Don't get me wrong, but it's not a diet of mostly avocado with a sprinkle of chicken breast. That's not going to get you into ketosis. The fat has to be higher than that. Most of the time when I'm really struggling with a patient who just can't seem to make ketones, can't seem to make ketones, and they won't do the sardines, I've said, eat butter for a day. That's 100% fat. Okay, so you can just have increase the butter. And yeah, you could have that. Okay, so that- Are it, there carbs in here? No. No. No, it's just fat. Mm. Mm -hmm. And it's not awful, <laughs> but it is a great social experiment where they haven't felt what satiety feels like in a while. People talk about net carbs. They say, you know, an avocado has 12 grams of carbs in, but it has 10 grams of fiber. So the net carbs is two. If you've never had insulin resistant, you can do it that way. My patients have had high insulin and I don't play that game. It's gotta be total carbs. Fiber is for farting. Do you recognize this photo of this lady? Oh, yes. Who is she? Why, she is just a great story. Jane had, uh, oh, she had pathology with how she thought about food, like many patients. She, <laughs> she had food as the way she coped with a lot of things. And as long as she was clearing her plate and using that food, it comforted a lot of wounds. When you start to address some of these things, I mean, the ketogenic diet doesn't fail if you just follow the chemistry. The ketogenic diet fails when you have humans who've had wounds, who've had a history, who have stress, who don't sleep. And Jane was a great story where all the goodness in the world that couldn't undo some of that relationship she had with food. Uh, so the first time, she, she's one of the coaches that I used for that 21 day, and she just has the best outcomes because she was doing a, a strong ketogenic diet you know, for those three weeks, twice a year. And she decided that after, I think, the third class, she was gonna do sardines only for 30 days. And she writes me at the end of the 30 days, can't believe how great she feels, and really kind of address some of those demons associated with why she would eat what she would eat. And then life hit again, and she put on some of the weight again. Um, she'd use sardines intermittently. And she called me and said, all right, I think I'm going to do this again. I'm going to just go on sardines and really have a, <laughs> some come-to-Jesus moments on why it, is, why it is that I do some of the things I do. I mean, it's a really vulnerable moment where— you can hide those moments. You can never tell a soul what's really going on through your mind. And she was going to address them. And I said, well, I have a bone to pick with Joe Rogan. He has said some inappropriate things about sardines, like they're 
arsenic poisoning. So I'd like to check a few blood levels in you before you ch start. So we check her vitamin D, we check her arsenic, selenium, and a few other things. And she starts on her sardine challenge, her sardine journey, and she goes a hundred days, a hundred days of only sardines. And not only does she, first of all, her vitamin D, she did not take any vitamin D, she stopped her vitamin D. It went from like the 30s and 40s up to just maybe over 100, 108 or something. Uh, her selenium didn't do anything naughty. Her arsenic did not do anything naughty, like Joe Rogan said it would. And she was able to um, not only shed the pounds, but really say some truths about why she was eating so much. And she confronted the pathology about why, why is she using food for those other things? You know, I do this thing in the 21 day where I ask them to find their best day in their life. And I'm trying to just get them to think about what does that feel like? What did, what did that look like? And then we go to the worst day in their life. And Jane wrote something that really touched me. She said, I don't think I've ever had the best day of my life. This was probably the third or fourth time we'd done that exercise. So she'd done it in a way where it didn't bring any extra attention, but she, was, she spoke a truth that just said, I've had this fear for so long that for the first time, I'm gonna say out loud that I'm looking for the best day of my life and I feel like I have the freedom to do it. That's what happened after 100 days of sardines. So if she eats a, a sardines for 100 days, she's probably not gonna get like the gut microbiome. She has the best gut microbiome. Th doesn't she need to be eating plants to Oh that? no, fibers for farting. So <laughs> you're looking at a gut biome, right? And so tell me what you think that is. Uh, lots of bugs that have been f feeding on plants. <laughs> okay, yes. Puterate has, uh, has part of that equation. So gut biome is the slime layer inside your gut. And it's where the critters live. It's where they set up homes. And they, if you have a really good slime layer, it's squishy. It's dense. It's not moth-eaten. It's not aqueous or water-like. It's squishy. And when you put plants in there, when you put fiber in there, it tears that down. Uh, and you say, well, fiber's needed for this because some of those bugs eat up on the fiber and they put out some butyrate and that helps these other bacteria to, to grow. You're like, yeah, that's one way to get a good microbiome, but we haven't been fiber eaters forever. And when you look at many of my carnivore patients, especially when they've got you know, some of those little fish scattered into that carnivore diet, um, their symptoms of irritable bowel, of chronic diarrhea, of you know bloody ulcers, reverse. Why? Because that gut biome got a lot stronger and a lot healthier. So the things that I, from doing this podcast for a long time, the things that I'd, I'd be concerned about if I just ate sardines for a prolonged period of time, or really any diet, I guess, for a prolonged period of time, a narrow diet would be the fiber issue we talked about. Mm -hmm. um, and then all the other things that are just not in sardines. I mean, vitamin C. Yeah, you still get a good vitamin C. So vitamin C has different rules when you go carnivore. What about magnesium? Yeah, lots of that. Uh, magnesium, I still think, is one supplement we all need. What about I mean, sodium overload? Because these are very salty, right? Your sodium churn, how well you use sodium, is dependent on how well you've eaten in the last week. So when you increase the sodium, those receptors get better. When you decrease the sodium, those receptors show down. That's a, that is an adjustment that everybody will make. What about things like mercury and the other sort of metals, mm. toxins? Little fish, little problems. You got the right one for mercury. Again, we tested that for her too. 100 days, no problem. Oh, the, especially in the can as well. I, I think I've got a bit of an issue with canned food these days because I've had so many- Microplastics. Microplastic to yeah. toxins, et cetera. I think you're majoring in the minor leagues there. That the, the amount of benefit that people get from sardines versus whatever might be in those- in that can, I tell patients not to worry about it. And then the last point I said was about digestive and mood issues because the gut microbiome is so so linked to brain. Absolutely, serotonin isn't it? The the I mean, serotonin's in the gut, but it's it's a huge part of uh, like a GLP one, the GIP. They're all produced hormones in the gut that are hugely impacting your brain. And when you want GLP one to be made, have a strong, thick microbiome. You do not need fiber to do that. You need butyrate. Butyrate is that two carbon uh, fat that comes from acromantia, you, you know, chewing up the fiber, right? Or beta hydroxybutyrate in your blood. That's that ketone thing you've got over there. 
Oh, Keep, these yeah, things. Yeah, the, all of them. Gosh, right? God. <laughs> there you go. Yes. Uh, it's a beta hydroxybutyrate is what that is going to turn into your circulation. Butyrate is uh, a fat chain mm -hmm. that's two carbons long. That's what the, you're asking that microbiome to say, here, this long string of fibers coming along, and that, that little bug is going to eat a piece of it and make butyrate, two carbons of fat. That's one of these things that you're talking about. You need to have butyrate. You need to have butyrate. That's what every, every why are you even fighting it? You got to have butyrate. All these, you know, experts come on my show and they talk about the importance of having a diverse. I, I know. I, I've, I've watched microbiome. a bunch of them. Yeah. Diverse microbiome, yes. And what I think. So it's not going to be diverse if I'm just eating one thing. Oh, yes, it will. It measure. I mean, so that's the whole point of a microbiome is what, what, you know, diverse enough to be supportive. I mean, diverse enough to have the, the two chain fat that you want to have in there. I mean, go back uh, and, and look at when our bodies were just eating, um, you know, fish or carnivore. Uh, they, the beauty of a microbiome is how much it does ad adjust in every patient. What about supplementation? Are the, what are the key supplements that you don't live without on a daily basis? Vitamin D turns out to be a really important one. I, if I'm eating sardines, uh, four or five cans a week, I probably don't need vitamin D, but. Why is it so important, vitamin D? Yeah, it's a hormone, right? A hormone that goes and talks to every one of the cells in your body, and it tells that cell to be its best version of itself. That hormone uh, goes to the nucleus, and it makes that skin cell do something different. It makes your brain cell do something different. It makes your heart cell do something different. You read all the benefits about vitamin D, and you think, it's like, it's like, uh, it does everything. Like, how can it do all of these things? And the reason why is it is not just a vitamin. It's a hormone that changes how the cell functions. Unfortunately, it's made of fat. So if you have high insulin, it gets stuck, parked in your fat cells, and it didn't get to the cell. Is there a link between vitamin D and ketosis and weight loss and insulin? Yeah, it's actually why I pointed out that when Jane did that 100 day, uh, she's been struggling with her vitamin D in the 30s or 40s. Right. But for the best brain, we want it to be of 50. So she starts on this sardine challenge. It's in the 30s or 40s, and she's supplementing. She's taking as much as she can. But what's happening, her insulin was putting it in her fat. She goes on sardines, which have vitamin D in them. By the end, her vitamin D was 105, 108, something like that. So you can see the experts say, don't go above 100, but the, 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 I, don't, I don't have any worry of hers being 108. What happened was she lowered her insulin and now fat can move around in her body like it's supposed to. And part of that fat isn't just her estrogen, it was her vitamin D. She looks like 20 years younger. Isn't it amazing? You should see how joyful she is. That's the part that you're like, what unlocked during those 100 days of, you can say food restriction, but vitamin D went up, uh, insulin went down, and she really said, how many things am I gonna comfort in my life from food and let's, let's, let's tackle that demon. Did it stick? Yeah, that's the cool part. If you love the Diary of a CEO brand and you watch this channel, please do me a huge favor, become part of the 15% of the viewers on this channel that have hit the subscribe button. It helps us tremendously and the bigger the channel gets, the bigger the guests.